Welcome to the final video in a series where I'll be exploring how to use Watson X Flows engine with different large language models. So far we've experimented with IBM Granite and also Meta Llama 3.1. In this final video, I'll be showing you how to work with Mistral Large. So Mistral Large 2 is really good at reasoning or helping you with code generation. Also, it's multilingual by design. It doesn't only support languages such as English or Spanish or French, it also supports a large number of character-based languages, such as Chinese, Japanese, or Hindi. So this will help developers with all sorts of different languages to build applications and services for all sorts of linguistic backgrounds. Mistral Large 2 also works really well when you're trying to do reasoning, also reasoning that involves larger pieces of text because it has a really large context window of almost 130,000 tokens. In this video, we'll be using the Mr. Large model together with Watson X Flows Engine. If you're not familiar with Watson X Flows Engine, it's a framework to build AI flows, meaning you can use a declarative flow language to build any AI flow, ranging from text completion, summarization, classification, to even retrieval augmented generation or rack. And we have a ton of videos on these topics right here on this YouTube channel. What we'll be doing today is we'll be using a couple of flows mostly for text completion, but also a chat flow, together with Mr. Large. And then we'll be using Watson X Flows Engine using the CLI to deploy this to a live endpoint. And we'll be using the SDK to interact with it from a little bit of JavaScript code. There is also a Python SDK available in case you prefer writing Python. So let's dive into VS Code and get started. In order to create a new Watson X Flows Engine project, you need to install the CLI. I've already installed the WXflow CLI by going to the dashboard and signing up for a free account. It's important to remember that you can sign up for free, there is no credit card required. And signing up for free allows you to use all sorts of LLMs, including Mr. Large, which we'll be doing in this video. I've created my very first flow, which is a flow for text completion. So this flow is composed of only two steps. There's one step which is setting the prompt template, and then there's another step that's setting the completion that goes to the large language model. In the completion, I've decided to make the model a variable that I can tweak, even though we only will be using Mr. Large today. I'm only sending off a set of parameters as well, so this could be the temperature or a stop sequence. In my prompt template, I've created the prompt template that works best for Mr. Large. As you can see here, we're setting a couple of tags, such as the S and instruct, and this will help the LLM to parse the prompt we send over. In order to deploy this, the only thing I need to do is run the command wxflow deploy. And what this will do, it will take my flow configuration, it will take any environment variables I have in this environment file, and then it deploys them to a live endpoint. As you can see here, it only took six seconds to deploy this text completion flow to a live endpoint. And whenever it's available on the endpoint, I can then use the SDK for JavaScript or Python to interact with my flows. I've set up a small example JavaScript code. Um, in the beginning, you need to set up your WXflows endpoint and API key. And of course, I've hidden this information for you, but you should uncomment these lines and add your own values. Um, and then finally, I'm going to interact with my flow. You can see I have a function model.flow which takes the schema, so it's an overview of all the different flows I have, and the SDK will help you to generate this. Then I need my flow name, which in this case is text completion. I need to set some variables, and then I want to set the model. So the model I'll be using is the Mr. Large model, and this is available on Watson X, and you can use it for free in Flows Engine. So let's say I have a question. And remember, this model is very good in working in different languages. So I can, for example, ask, can you translate the word computer into five different languages? So this should be doable for most LLMs. Let's see what Mr. Large comes up with. But first, I'm going to give it a format or a structure that I want my answers to be in. Use the following format. And for this, I want to do language, and then I want to do the translation. So let me save this, and then I can run the Node.js app by running node index.js. 
and it should return the response in my terminal. If we look at the response, you can see it's giving me the translations in five different languages, uh, Spanish, French, German, Italian, and then also in Japanese. And the Japanese one is interesting for this model because not all LLMs are able to work with character only languages such as Japanese. Besides simple text completion, we can also create a chat flow. And to implement a chat flow, you normally also need some sort of JavaScript application or a way to maintain state. For now, we're going to assume that all these flows are text in or text out, meaning that on every request, I'm going to send over the entire chat history. So let's get back into VS Code and set up a chat flow. In my wxflows.toml file, I can now create another flow. I'm going to call this flow chat and it takes two steps. One step is templated prompt, which will take my prompt template. As you can see, this time I'm leaving over the formatting of the prompt template to my JavaScript application. Also, I'm hard coding the model to be Mistral AI slash Mistral dash large. And this is the model ID that I need to use if I want to access Mistral large through the Watson X platform. If I save this and deploy this by typing wxflows deploy in my terminal, it will make this flow available on a live endpoint. As we saw before, this will only take a couple of seconds to deploy this directly to the cloud. In my application, I already set up the flow name to be chat, and then I, then I pasted a part of my prompt template in there. So in here, I can type a question like, I want to learn more about LLMs. Please explain it to me like I'm a five-year-old. And by saving this, I can now run my Node.js app by running node index.js. And this will take my new flow called chat. It will pass in this prompt and then it will use the Mr. AI large model. I can actually delete this as I already defined the model directly in my flow. If I look at the answer, it says, sure, imagine playing a game, blah, blah, blah. Assume you want to ask a follow-up question. What I should do then is I can copy this, the response, and put it in my prompt. And what I can do then, I can close this interaction by using this tag, which is S, and I can create a new instruction. So the new instruction would be the follow-up question. Like, imagine playing a game where you have to guess what someone is thinking. I can then ask, give me an example of a game. And by closing this, I close the instruction. I can save it. And then I need to make sure there's a space here so the LLM knows it needs to do completion. If I save this and run my Node.js app again, what it will do, it will take the entire chat history, which is my first question, the answer of the LLM, and then my follow-up question, and it should generate another answer. So it says, let's play a game, what am I? And then finally in the end, it says, is it a lion? Yes, it is. It isn't related to the LLM, so let's find out what's going wrong. I should probably be a bit more explicit and say, give me an example of a game that explains what a large language model is. And if I save this and run my Node.js app again, it should now take the previous history and use this to give me an example of a game instead of coming up with a new game. And as you can see, they're uh, proposing a game where uh, you need to reason and then figure out an LLM is something that thinks. As a follow-up, what you probably want to do is turn this into some client-side JavaScript application, or maybe you want to build a server-side route where you're maintaining this state, because now you need to copy-paste it and every time you need to rerun uh, this specific function. You probably want to store this state somewhere and then have the SDK uh, returning it for you on every request. What you can also do with the Mr. Large models is tool calling. 
I didn't show any tool call example today, but I promise you, you can find a video on tool calling on this channel very soon. And that's how easy it is to build a new application using What's the Next Flows Engine together with a Mr. Large model. If you missed any of the other videos in this series, make sure to look at our YouTube playlist because there are more videos in this series and we also have examples on building other types of applications such as summarization or RAG. Keep an eye out for our YouTube channel because we will be releasing videos on a weekly basis. So make sure to subscribe and like this video.